The Fender Book by Colin R. Jones, the DIY book of Fenders. Another lovely little book this. However, just be aware, it's not a book on all different knots. It is purely to do with fenders. So if you want to make a fender or you're interested in fenders in some way, then this is an excellent tutorial book um, on how to make fenders. The other thing to remember is that when you're making fenders, they don't necessarily need to be full size. There's no reason why you can't copy um, the ideas in here and make yourself miniature fenders using paracord um, or some other form of cordage, just as key rings, etc. Um, so yes, a very good little book. One reason I like this book a lot is, first of all, spiral bound. And so therefore, when you open it, it stays open on the page that you want. Um, so as we go through the book, what I'll do is I'll just get to the page um, with the index in. And a little introduction here. Oh, this is quite interesting here as well. I mean, look at that su the size of that ball of string there with the guy stood next to it. Um, it says here, Reg Jones, pictured by Wrights Ropes, Birmingham Limited. Okay, so uh, just a good good example of a coiled rope there. Uh, and look at the size of that fid in front of him. Um, I'm sure this picture is online somewhere if you want to search it out. Um, there's an introduction here about Colin Jones himself. Uh, but let's get to the index because that's what I said I'd do next. And get there. Sorry about the one-handedness of it all. And here we go. So basically, the contents of this book is... First of all, what is a fender? Um, and it'll, what is a fender? It'll tell you all about fenders, etc. Um, the actual core of a fender, what it's made up of. Um, so if you're making a full size fender, um, a few of them do have chains and other core materials inside. We then go on to making a side fender, how to make a bow fender, and then there's a, how to make a fender the half hitch way, in other words, using half hitching, or the fender the weaving way. So in other words, there's two different ways of producing fenders. Um, another section here on how to splice. Hey, the Turk's head knot rears its head again. So obviously the Turk's head knot is in just about everything we do. And then in the last little section here, there is a chapter on some useful knots. But like I say, Excellent book, stays open whichever page you've got it on. It's got good illustrations and drawings in here, as you can see here. So it looks like side fenders here and a couple of button fenders um, as examples. I mean, the only thing I would say is, once again, the trouble with drawings is, yes, drawings make everything look pretty, but having an actual photograph of your finished item um, I think makes the knotter more conscious about how he's um, producing his work. Um, also, it goes on to here, polyesters, polypropylenes, all the different kinds of ropes that you can use, etc. Um, and then we go on to chains, cores, the actual cores of a fender, and let's see where else we go with this. Oh, it's a bit dithery. And as you can see here, now we're getting into the section of actually producing a fender itself. Um, oh, that hurts my arm. Okay, so here we can see here, in this particular section, we're going to make a side fender. And it basically shows you step by step as to how many strands of rope... It even tells you to start cut two lengths of rope, 14 feet length, four length of rope, 6.6 or six and a half foot long. And if using synthetic rope, heat seal the ends. And it goes on. Very simple, easy to follow instructions. So you go from figure one to figure two, all the little instructions in between. Figure three. And then eventually when you follow it through, you should end up. I've done this anyway. I know for a fact is that you will end up with a very nice side fender. Um, I don't have a boat as such. I've said in the past, I produced my side fender following the instructions here. Very easy to use. 
Works well. I mean, to be honest, the side fender is now hanging on my garage, and since it's hung on the garage, no vessel has ever crashed into the garage. Mind you, we're not near the sea either, so there's not much chance of that happening. But as an ornament, the fender looks good hanging on my garage. Um, and so there you go, you see, we go right through. We're still producing it here. It goes on for lots and lots of pages. And this is just on one particular fender, how to produce the side fender. So in other words, you're getting a lot of information. And eventually here, we're starting to produce the fender itself. And we've almost finished it. And it'll show you how to finish off the fender as well. So you can see here, just a wonderful book very easy to follow pages turn over lay open flat so we don't have to keep holding the pages down and trying to look at it and fiddle with our work at the same time and ultimately in this particular section we've produced a side fender shows you how to do a double crown single crown and so on this book is just packed full of anything you need to know with regards to fenders we then have um, a bow fender, it shows you the innards of the bow fender and how to cover it. Um, and that's using the half hitch way. And we keep going here and it's showing you how to do it. You know, it really is a smashing little book. It even has a little section of tools to use um, from the FID to the FID spike, the Swedish FID, which is hollowed out. Um, and a needle spike and then we get onto the section here with fender the weaving way so in other words you can weave a fender as opposed to doing hitching on it and once again this one's got a chain core and so yes you know i mean to be honest i personally love this book absolutely fantastic book when it comes to the information we need um, here's a section on splicing by the look of it um, and keep going on. Yeah, it shows. The, yeah, it's showing us splicing here. And gosh, splicing is going on still. So obviously this is the back splice here now, whereas the previous one was an eye splice. And here we have it, the Turk's head. But I, I'm not sure why. I've never looked at the section on Turk's heads to be honest. They're in every, nearly every single book. But obviously the idea of this Turk's head is that you, it looks as though we're making a crash mat. Um, or a thump mat um, from our rope. Um, so yes, you know, and then we're now we're getting onto the section of some useful ropes. We've got the bow line with a sheet bend, the double sheet bend, the clove hitch, you know, so basic knots that you would need for your fenders, etc. And we then get onto the final page. This one is 65, 67 pages long. And yeah, as a book, I do like it. There's no fluff or wool about it. It's just straight to the point, tells you what to do and how to produce, whether it be a side fender, a bow fender or a button fender. Um, I'm sure there's other fenders out there as well. And it just tells you how to tie them and make them look good. And like I said before, no need to use full size rope, scale it down and use smaller cordage and that way you can produce those decorative key rings, etc. So yeah, The Fender Book by Colin R. Jones, the DIY book of Fenders, I like it. And once again, look for it on eBay, Amazon. You don't necessarily have to buy it brand new. I don't know what price it was brand new, but do look for it. So anyway, that brings me to the end of the quick book review for this particular book. If you enjoyed the re review, please do share this video so that others can watch it. And there should be a share button at the bottom of your screen, down that way. Can I point down that, that way? And if you like this video and want to see other videos that are related to knots, knotting, um, book reviews with regards to knotting, etc., Please subscribe and I will send out on a regular basis videos um, covering all the different subjects that we can do. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching again.